Uh, we're going to talk about a little bit about population characteristics of Toledo Bend this morning. Uh, this comes from my, my research we did in 2008-2009. So, give you a little history of how this all worked out, and, and we became we started doing this research. Originally, in around 2003-2004, we were getting commercial complaints about undersized channel catfish in this reservoir. And to give you a, uh, some kind of reference. In 2006, this reservoir was catching, they were reporting 226,000 pounds of channel catfish harvest. And uh, so it, it led us to start researching channel catfish. Between 2005 and 2007, we tried several different gears, that, uh, tandem hoop nets horizontally placed on the bottom. We tried electrofishing, we tried gill nets. None of those worked. Uh, the effort required to, to actually sample this population just was not possible. Uh, for your reference, Toledo Bend is 183,000 acres, so hence my question a little while ago about everybody referring to large reservoirs. This is the biggest one in the southwest, or southeast, I mean. So from that research, we knew that we needed to develop some type of gear or figure out how to sample this. So we actually went to the commercial fishermen and, figured, and asked them, can you take us out and show us how you're doing this? I mean, we can't catch 50. How are you catching 200,000 pounds? So if you see this picture here, this is the, the gear that they use that we, we mimicked and developed. <clears throat> and it's a vertical hoop net. Uh, it's placed uh, on a stump. And if, when those are not present, we use a cork and a weight and just tie it off at the, at the cork. Uh, and using this technique, we adequately, we think, we adequately sampled this, this population. So from there, we, we wrote a study and started in 2008. And we were trying to determine the length of maturity so that we could adequately sample and then set the regulation for the commercial harvest. And the, the current, at the time, the current regulation, and still is, I'm sorry, was 11 inches. So we wanted to determine if that was uh, still feasible. Also, we wanted to determine the peak spawning <clears throat> and use that uh, to assess the effects of the current regulations, both recreational and commercial. And secondary was just to, to look at relative weight, sexual maturation, stuff to see how the, the population was growing. So some of the methods, uh, first thing we did was split the reservoir into two zones to get accurate samples. And you can see here the, the southern zone, which is more open water, uh, primarily habitat was uh, SAV, some flooded timber, uh, increased water clarity down there, uh, uh, deep, lots of deep water. That's where the deepest water, of course, is in the reservoir, but also had uniform thermocline throughout. In the upper area, the northern zone, uh, more timber, flooded timber. Uh, this area stays turbid a lot. There's not a lot of SAV and we don't have a lot of thermocline in that area. So this is a picture, a uh, map of the reservoir. Uh, just for your reference, this is Pendleton Bridge. This is what separated the two zones. Toledo Bend uh, is the border between Texas and Louisiana for about 90 miles. So we have this, this black line is the old Sabine River. Uh, we have about 54% of it occurs in Louisiana. So getting down to gear and, uh, and the bait we used, this is the specifics on that. Uh, the, the nets were 18 inches in diameter, right at five feet long, and they have metal metal hoops. I uh, did bring one today for later on if anybody's interested in seeing this, I brought one. We used soybean uh, and cheese compressed bait blocks and we put those in uh, mesh bait bags. The, the nets were connected to the either the stump or to the uh, float with uh, trout line clips, and uh, we used six inch foam floats when the, the stumps were not present. So we used two bait bags, or two blocks of bait for each bait bag, uh, and the bait bags were suspended on a uh, rope that bisected the last hoop so that the bait falls over the throat and tracks the catfish into the net. And they were set vertically uh, on stumps in 14 to 30 feet of water, and for a minimum of at least 48 hours. So we took samples throughout 2008, 2009 quarterly. We measured and weighed all catfish. 
And then we took 35 channel catfish from five different size groups corresponding through ages two through six <clears throat> to make sure that we had adequate samples in that area for aging, I'm sorry. Uh, we also collected weight minus the stomach to reduce bias of the, the bait in the net. They, they get pretty, get in there, stay for a couple days, and they get pretty fat. <clears throat> Obviously, recorded sex, stage of maturity. We weighed the gonads for a GSI index, and we moved spines for aging. Uh, we did use a three reader uh, for aging spines, just like most people are doing. Two people had to be in agreement before we recorded that age, and if there was any differences in that when you came together and talked about that to come to consensus. So you can see here, typical net catch with us removing spines. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is going out today. So you can see the, the quarterly samples here. Um, what do you want to point out a couple of things here? We were learning how to catch these fish in the reservoir using these nets. So this is not really indicative of, of what you can expect catch-wise in these nets, but the northern zone, which is where the commercial fishermen had showed us the type of habitat we should be looking for, we, we, did, we excelled at catching these fish with these nets. So here's the age frequency distribution from our, the 35 fish subsamples. Uh, you can see uh, there's not many fish out past age seven. In fact, I don't think we ever got a fish past age eight, so. <clears throat> this is a typical picture of a typical net when you pick it up. Uh, this only had about 50 or 60 fish in it, but some of these nets would, would catch 200 pounds. So they'd, they'd be right beside each other. One might catch 50, the next might have 300. So from the catch curve, we estimated annual mort total animal mortality at 80%. Excuse me. And also uh, from that age data, we looked at 50% uh, maturity level. And for females and males, both were right at age three. For length, there was a slight difference in, in uh, length of maturity. Females was 279 for the 50% level, and males was right at 275. Length weight relationship, uh, both had fit well. Uh, I do want to say that the uh, R squared for females is slightly lower because we included gravid females. And then we started looking at GSI for them, some of these fish, and this is what really determined some of the recommendations we'll talk about in a minute. All the fish under 18 inches had relatively poor relative weights. And I've searched through the literature and so far I have yet to find anything that really describes what this number should be, but in relative to all other species, we know that they want to be up close as the hundreds we can get. So we're assuming that that stuff between 80 and 85 is, is not good. A um, little bit of the GSI information. We started trying to sample this uh, more frequently to try to de determine where their peak was. Uh, we were not able to continue that, so we stopped uh, trying to sample every month. But you can see that June was the peak. We, were, we missed March, April, and May, so we, we don't know for sure if there might be a peak somewhere before that, and that June is, is still stalling off. So we had to relax some of our uh, conclusions on that, but you can see there the Peak we have. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Von Burt uh, for this population, you can see that they grow relatively fast in the beginning, but they have a, a little low maximum length. And just for your reference, these are channel catfish. So some of our conclusions. Uh, we surmise that this, is, this population has symptoms of a stunning population due to high annual mortality, low relative weights, and slow growth rates. 
and the length of maturity are similar uh, on this population to three or four other studies that have been done all over Louisiana. Most of those other studies were done in the coastal range, uh, coastal bays and lakes, uh, where those catfish uh, interact with salt water, or at least brackish. So we're not positive that that's similar all across the state of Louisiana, but it is similar to those, those other studies. Uh, the GSI indicated that spawning is somewhere in the mid uh, to early summer. And because we started looking at commercial effort and trying to figure out what was causing this, we also looked at recreational harvest. And for a four-year average from 2008, or starting in 2008, the total directed effort was 3.7%. That range of, of effort was in the 300 to 500,000 hours a year so we're less than 4% average. So the management implications for this. Uh, the first thing we wanted to try to do once we found out that we, we had too many channel catfish and they weren't growing fast enough was try to encourage angler utilization of that species. So we have yet to determine if we're going to move the, the commercial harvest or the commercial minimum length limit, but we have made that recommendation in the manuscript it was just approved last week. Uh, in 2009, uh, Louisiana legislature passed a resolution that encouraged us to get with the state of Texas and uh, get uniform regulations across the entire reservoir. So in 2010, we came together and we discussed this, came to a uh, consensus, and we moved the regulation for channel catfish and combined them with blues. And it, we, one time, it, well, before this, it was 100. We moved them to uh, 50 creel with no minimum length limit, and a five fish over 20 uh, minimum, uh, maximum length. We got sufficient uh, complaints during 2010, 2011, for us to go back and look at that again. We did another study using trout line data and actually moved that in 2011 to five fish over 30. So a 20 inch fish in this reservoir is roughly three pounds. We moved that to almost five pounds. So the, rec the recreational harvest has not increased as far as we can tell. The effort has not changed, but we are trying to encourage the utilization of those smaller fish. And with that, I'll take any questions. I didn't talk about that, but I did put that in the manuscript. There are commercial fishermen that I talked to when I worked there <clears throat> that use fish for bait, and they can you can switch from one species to the other by, by changing the bait. Uh, that one commercial fisherman who ran a fish house in Abbeville was talking about catching about three quarters of a million pounds by himself a year of blue cat. And if he caught a channel cat, he didn't want it. He threw it back. So yes, you can catch uh, blues for sure. We didn't record any flatheads, uh, and, I, and I've had several talks with people in other states about bycatch. They were concerned with it, because that's always a concern. We caught no bycatch. Uh, every now and then, the commercial fishermen we would see would catch a carp or, or a drum, uh, but everybody I've talked to wanted to know how many turtles we caught, and we caught zero. So. All right, well, I'll be here at the next break if y'all are interested in looking at that net. Hey, it's up here, I have a question. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> so uh, I, I liked um, your figure about the, the um, condition index for these fish, and I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about what you think is going on there with the younger ages having a much lower condition than some of the older ones. Uh, we think it's a density thing, and it's simply a forage base. Uh, we don't know if it's... Um, because they haven't switched to a fish-based diet yet. There's plenty of shad in the reservoir, but uh, we didn't look at that forage base at all. Okay. So. so you think they're switching on an older? Yeah, so. uh, the number of fish we got over 18 inches was less than 8%, so it's hard to describe what's going on there. And I looked, I compared that with data from Texas, they're getting about the same percentage of fish in that upper length group. So it's hard to say, but those fish are doing much better than the younger ones. 
Again, I'll be here at the next break uh, uh, about the hall. If anybody wants to talk or see us in that, I have all of them. Okay, thank you, Sean.